The universe is made of stories, not atoms. How true it is. We all love stories. Stories have been part of our existence. Since very early childhood days, we have been listening and telling stories. But then we enter this corporate world. How many times we all have been in those meetings, in those conference rooms, where everyone is just buried in their laptops? I see few over here as well. And then they have got this magical device in their hand called cell phone, through which they are tweeting, retweeting, Facebooking, Instagramming, Facebooking, WhatsApping, what not, but hardly paying any attention to the poor presenter. <laughs> but this is what happens when you start telling a story. You'll see their heads slowly popping up and listening to you. This is the time. You share your insight. This is the time you make your pitch, you might say. Yes, we all understand storytelling is important, Gulrez, but how do we tell stories with data? That's precisely what we'll try to cover in today's session. But before we dive into that, let me tell you a story. <laughs> Few weeks back, I was very occupied with work and was hardly paying any attention at home. So naturally, the handset at my home was going down. And my wife and my daughter were not very happy about that. So I thought, I'll do something to make them happy. And one fine day I said, all right, it's enough. Today I'm going to rest my neural network and have quality time with the family. Listening to this, my wife gave me a smile back. And my daughter yelled, yay, today we're going to play with Legos. Legos? I thought I wanted to rest my neural network. But I said, oh, anyways, bring it on. So she brought all these different colors, Legos, the reds, the greens, the blues, whites, yellows, all in different shapes and sizes. And I started playing around with it, massaging it, ETL, transformation, load, all the stuff. And after spending some 30 minutes with the Legos, here were my inventions. So Mike, your sofa for you, <laughs> an apple tree, and ladies and gentlemen, presenting to you for the first time the much rumored, much awaited Surface phone. <laughs> Looking at my inventions, my daughter giggled. She laughed. And then she asked me a question. Baba, does this phone sleep on the sofa, or did someone leave it in the park? What she was craving was she was craving for a story. I didn't have any story. I spent all my energy in doing all this Azure Data Factory stuff, massaging, ETL, and getting the data in these uh, great structures, which I thought were great. Uh, so I didn't have any story. I said, Baba spent so much time on it. Why don't you create your own story and just fit in? It was almost 8 PM by that time. And my wife called us for dinner. After dinner, my daughter went to bed. And then I went back to work. There I was staring at my laptop and looking at my visualizations, and they looked exactly similar to the Lego structures. <laughs> so, and her question kept coming back to me, Baba, where is the story? <laughs> so I spent so much time in doing all these uh, Azure Data Factory, Azure Stream Analytics, machine learning, and getting data in this shape, and I was very proud of this work. But again, there is this story component which was missing. And I have left it to the audience or to the business stakeholders to fit in any story you want. And that's when I thought maybe I should do something to do, uh, figure out how do I tell stories with data. Storytelling with data is like writing a comic book. As you can see over here, the illustrator has done a great job in moving from sequence to sequence and then telling a story uh, in a very sh few frames. But when we share our visualization, often a single visualization is insufficient to tell the whole stuff. So can we do something similar when we tell stories with data uh, or presenting our data? Uh, I'll give a quick uh, demo on that. And So it looks like okay, you guys can see it. 
All right. So this is the data from Bing. And uh, what we have got over here is I was looking for, um, so working in the, micro, in the Microsoft Worldwide Learning team, we recently launched a data science track uh, where you can take online courses on edX. And uh, when we were launching this track uh, or this program, I was doing a research on when people search for data science, what are the places they go to? And this is just uh, the starting one, the Lego structures that I created. And this is the scratch. There are a lot of problems with this thing. And uh, I don't think I've got enough time uh, to do this, like uh, step by step uh, showing the transformation. But I'll just quickly show about the panel stuff. And So this is the same data that we are seeing in, in a different tab. It has got a title which says a few keywords that I was looking for, data science, analytics, big data, machine learning, 2015 and onwards on Bing search. There are panels which I am following, and this is Power BI for your inf information. What is data science? Most of the searches are happening for, to know about data science. So look at the second and the third. This is Wikipedia. People want to know what is data science. And then there is a Forbes article uh, somewhere written in 2013 where people are still going and searching for it. Then further you can go down and see what are the places where people are searching for this thing. And uh, like that, uh, a degree in data science, whether we should launch a degree, there is a big uh, uptick that we are seeing when people are searching for data science, degrees, and other stuff. So like that, you've got different panels. Uh, where you can see all this different stuff. And with the, in the interest of time, I'll go back to our presentation. Okay. So that's, that was the first point. And uh, the second point is storytelling with data. Text is your friend. And uh, I'll do another uh, demo over here. And this time what happened was I got a traffic violation ticket. So my wife was again not happy. And uh, okay. Okay. So I went to Seattle Police Department side and uh, got all the data about traffic violation tickets that everyone got uh, in the year 2016. And turns out there were 44,000 traffic violation tickets issued in 2016 alone. So I told my wife, I'm not the only person who get these tickets. <laughs> so that's one point of it. But other than that, like the, you can see how we can leverage. This is, again, Power BI. You can see all the different places. 8 AM is the time where you should avoid parking illegally. Weekends, parking are free. Summer month, we see a peak again. So. That's uh, another thing. And uh, going back, OK. So this is a, one of my favorite. These, these are Facebook updates, which people are doing all over the year. And uh, on a particular topic, you see there are peaks happening two times in the year, in a spring cleaning time, and then there is something before the holidays. Any guesses what this could be, what topic? could people be uh, posting about in Facebook? And it peaks every Monday, coming from a weekend. What's that? Marriage proposals. Marriage proposals? <laughs> Quite close. <laughs> yes, so this is uh, <laughs> peak breakups. So again, go back to what I was talking about. I was talking about text. Use text as your friend. So. This comes from informationisbeautiful.net. Valentine's Day, forgot to book the restaurant. Spring break, <laughs> Mondays, coming from a bad weekend, summer holidays, and then Christmas, two weeks before holidays. And the lowest is Christmas Day. Who would do that? <laughs> <laughs> Too cruel. So this was text. And another example, I'll just fast forward to it. This is crocodile sightings in Queensland, Australia, 2010 to 2015. If you remove all the text and remove all the pictures, how would it look like? The same Lego structures? 
but look how beautifully it has been made and now you want to see it. You want to see like what's going on. There is a story, there is a narrative. Uh, so, okay, so I think there is one more. Storytelling with data, there is importance of color. Can you count the number of Diet Coke canes in this uh, picture? How about now? <coughs> and now? And now? Does it make it easier now? So the reason is that I'm using pre-attentive attributes over here. The pre-attentive attribute that I'm using over here is color and also the position. So like that, when you want to stress on something, the beauty of uh, uh, visualization is not showing everything. It's about showing only what is important. If I'm, uh, I, I want to present some stuff, I want you to look into just this thing. I know you are busy, you want to tweet, you want to Facebook. <laughs> And I want your attention to just a specific topic in a minimum time. So that's where you've got the Diet Coke example. And the last piece is, I think, animation. Uh, and uh, this is a tribute to Hans Rosling, if uh, you have seen uh, his TED Talk. Where is my mouse? Okay. So working in Microsoft gave me an opportunity to meet people from different places. Like even here I see the different diversity. People coming from different backgrounds, from different countries. But here my story is about Bangladesh. Bangladesh is a very uh, interesting country. If you look at uh, the green uh, dot over here, you'll see it's uh, near India, very small country. But what makes it really interesting is the population size. And how many people? Pay close attention to how I am using the colors over here. I'm talking about Bangladesh. I want you to look just spe specifically at Bangladesh. Here you will notice that I'm talking about Bangladesh. So here, Bangladesh is eighth position in terms of the uh, number of population. And then further, what makes it more interesting is the population density. Population density, you'll see there are around 1,100 people per square kilometer in Bangladesh, which is really too much. And uh, you, would see, <laughs> you would see India at uh, number fifth spot 12 years back when I came from India. I was very uh, puzzled. I won't see people over here in, in the uh, winter days. And um, there uh, back home, you would not need a GPS. I thought maybe that's why they created GPS over here. Uh, so they can check that out. And then further, uh, I want to see, I, I, I want to show the animation aspect. And what you're seeing over here is, let uh, me just, okay. Okay. So for people who don't know India, Pakistan, and Bangladesh, what a single country uh, back a few years back. And now what you see is like they are broken into three different countries. And by the way, today is the Republic Day for India, so happy Republic Day, India. Uh, uh, so what you're seeing over here is you've got uh, the x-axis over here where you've got the children dying before they attain the age of five. So out of 100, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 children dying. And on the y-axis, you see children per women. 2, 3, 4, 5, and goes up to 8. Up till 8 children per women is what you are seeing. And the bubbles that you are seeing over here are the countries. And again, this is Power BI. What I've done is I've separated this into two different uh, sections. There is a section for developing countries, and there is a section for industrialized country. So in the developing countries, you see India, Pakistan, and Bangladesh. The size of the bubble is indicating the population for that country. And 1960, look at what happened in 1960. In 1960, there were 26 children out of 100 dying in Bangladesh, around the same for India and Pakistan. And seven kids per women, uh, six or seven kids per women in 1960. Industrialized world was doing great with US, Japan, Italy, UK, 
less than four kids per woman and then less than five people, children dying out of 100 before they attain the age of five. What happened ne next is very interesting. And as you roll into this, but before that, I will just want to highlight on to Bangladesh. And something very interesting is happening. You see, OK, I think I've highlighted Pakistan. <laughs> 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 and uh, let's go back. OK, I think this is Bangladesh. No, no still. <laughs> there you go. OK, so this is what's happening. 1966, 67, this is how things are changing. China came in because we got the data later. After 72, you'll see Bangladesh kind of going down. It's crossing Pakistan. It got independence from Pakistan in 72. It already crossed uh, Pakistan over here. Will, will it chase India? Will it cross India? It's going fast, 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 fast. <laughs> and you look at over here. They are, all of them are going towards the industrialized country. 2000, uh, 2001, 2, 3, it has crossed India. Amazing journey. <laughs> and what you see over here is India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, all are going over here. Amazing journey. Out of 26 kids which are dying from 100, they have now two, two or three kids dying. So what an amazing improvement that has happened. And again, what I've done over here is I've used animation, and I wanted to talk about just a specific story. I had the data for all the countries, for all the, for, for the world, but my intention was to just talk about Bangladesh. And going back, yep, so I think uh, I'm out of time. And so basically, I just want to rephrase. When you are doing, uh, pro uh, producing something, you are telling, uh, sh sharing data, think about it. It's about humans. They'll get bored when you talk about Bayesian statistics all the time. So think about how you can make it interesting. You can use the different pre-attentive attributes. You can use your personal stories. And uh, even if you get uh, parking violation tickets, do something, make it interesting. And uh, your wife will be happy. <laughs> OK, thank you.